Bar Stool Sports. Bar Titus. Brandon Walker. Mostly Sports. Welcome to Mostly Sports. I'm Mark Titus. He's Brandon Walker. Today is Friday, March 15th. We are live from Chicago. We are brought to you by Jägermeister. We, Jägermeister is our presenting sponsor. We love Jägermeister. Uh, and we've got another ad for Jägermeister, Brandon. Mm -hmm. They wanted to mix things up. They wanted to avoid getting all boring, and so we don't have to read the same ad every time. I appreciate that they did this. They're mixing up the copy on Thank it. Thank you. So for this ad, are you ready for this? No. They want us to chant for 60 seconds straight. <laughs> Ice cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Really? Ice cold shots. Damn, damn that's, that's cold. cold. So, ice so cold hold on. Shots. Me and you be ice, ice cold shots, and the couch boys be damn that's yeah, cold. Yeah, and like do it in a way that you fill in. Yeah. Like don't don't necessarily wait till we're done. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Just find the blank space. Find the blank space yourself. All right. Okay. Ice cold, cold shots. shots. Damn, ice that's cold, cold shots. Well, hold on, hold on. We were going straight through there. I think I we, we were for I think we're doing our own thing. Ice I don't think it's, I don't think it's a pass the ball back and forth. I think it's a layer on top. Don't throw your okay. garbage in my backyard, sort of thing. Y'all don't think it's like let's go seeing us, seeing us sucks. You don't think that's hmm. it's dual, not dueling chance. I think it's more of like let's try dueling chance first. Okay, okay, let's try that. Ice, Ice cold, cold shots. shots. Damn, Damn that's, that's cold. cold. Ice, Ice cold, cold shots. shots. Damn that's cold. Ice cold shots. shots. Damn, that's cold. All right, now, I, now try one. Like, you know the, uh, yeah, the, 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 the you have two things. You're singing this two separate. Okay, so we're doing ours and they're doing theirs? Like Brad Paisley singing I'm a White Man right. as LL Cool J's rapping. R.I.P. Robert E. Yeah, Lee. Uh, Robert E. Yeah. All right. You, you layer on top of okay. each other. Ice cold Damn, shots. Damn, that's cold. Ice Damn, cold, cold, cold shots. Damn, Ice that's cold shots. Damn, Ice that's cold, cold shots. Cold. Damn, Ice cold. cold. I think we beat. Damn, that's cold. cold. We beat y'all. Y'all yeah, we weren't even on rhythm. We Ebo wasn't even talking. I was out of sync for a second there. I, I'm, I'm going like ice cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Ice cold shots. Like, I'm doing that. <laughs> that. That was me. My rhythm was wherever awesome. you're at. If you're hanging with friends <laughs> or at the bar, or maybe you're doing all the sports stuff or just the mostly sports stuff. Call the shots. Cheers with ice cold Jägermeister. Remember to check Jägermeister out at Jägermeister.com. Drink responsibly. Jägermeister. Liqueur, 35% alcohol by volume. Imported by Master Jägermeister U.S. Mm -hmm. White Plains, New York. Ice cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Brian, what do you want to talk about? I'm sorry. I, so, got, I got distracted. It's okay. It's all right. Two things, because we got a lot of sports to talk about. We got a lot of college basketball to talk about. But before we do that, and maybe this is an off-air conversation. Maybe I shouldn't bring it on air, but Mark, just, just table conversation only, desk conversation. Yep. What do you think about Connor Griffin texting the group at – 6:24 a.m. with a Livy Dunn story. Yeah, I think 6:24 a.m. I think for most people watching, um, they're thinking that's kind of egregious, but also I need to know what the story is because yeah, maybe there's something interesting going on. Maybe there's uh, no. It was a TikTok mm -hmm. of Livy Dunn watching her boyfriend pitching. Uh huh. The uh, literally the single most boring piece of content <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. It is it is 15 seconds of my life I will never get back. And now, now we're talking about it, and this is time I'm also not going to get yeah. back. So now I've invested almost a full minute of, you've, of this. You've ruined the entire yes. morning. I was sending it mainly because of look at how tiny her laptop is. <laughs> that was what I was focused on. So I think – also. I think she's going for this aesthetic. I think she wants it to look like she's look, watching on a tiny laptop. Because these days, if you can stream something on a laptop, you can stream that motherfucker right up on your TV. No problem. No problem. Yeah. It also, I love Living Dumb, but it was a video that kind of enraged me. So I was sending it to you guys. Why did it enrage you? It was just overacting. Like, oh, no. Like, somebody get a camera on me. I'm watching my boyfriend play. Oh. That was all it was. Yeah. Who is the other person in this? Uh, is this a totally candid shot of her wrapped up in a blanket yeah. watching? Yeah. Also, one more thing. One more thing. For, why on earth is does she have it on the back of the couch and she's yeah, facing why, the back of the couch? It was uh, all around. Crazy place to put it. This was not a, a horny 624 a.m. text. This was me this was seeing something. What? You were seething in anger. Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. 
and I just wanted to send it to the group to get your thoughts. But well, uh, yeah. how does this differentiate between your other six twenty four a.m. Livy Dunn shit that you send us all the time? This was a specific example where yeah, it was a video that I thought was odd in many ways, and the oddity of it actually made me furious. But usually, yeah, it's you know what the other stuff. Is. I watched it. I could not figure out what the hell the point of you sending that was. Um, yeah. I just like to get the group chat active early. And now I'm realizing that he is he is Stephen Shea. He is. I've he is said the this guy, from the yeah, beginning. I know he is. He is the guy that brings a yeah. the most mundane topic you can possibly. I I I watched that. I was like, why the fuck, Connor? Would we talk about this on the show? He's the white half of Stephen Shea. And here we are leading the show with it, uh-huh. <laughs> which was not and my Connor, decision. And Connor wins. We could have just not talked about this at all, but you guys led the show with it. That's a good Cliff's Notes version of this show. Yeah. A lot. Connor wins. Connor wins. Hashtag Connor wins. It's like, in what world would we give a fuck about this? Now let's spend the next 20 minutes mm-hmm. opening the show yeah. about this. Is that gaslighting? And how much we don't care about this. Is that gaslighting? Did we just get, get gaslighted? Um, lighted? Lit? Loat? Did we get gaslit? Uh, Maybe? I don't know. I don't remember what. No, gaslighting. No, gaslighting is not that. Gaslighting is. Damn it. I, never mind. <laughs> I was trying to. Gaslight me? Yeah, yeah, I was trying to no. gaslight you, but I don't even know. All right. We're in too deep. Part two. I'm trying to keep all the blood in my head. Um, part two. Go ahead. All those in this room whose team is still alive in their conference tournament or have already won their conference tournament, raise your hand. Let's mm. see. Ebo. Connor, did you not hear the Mark question? Tries- I heard the question. I, know, I saw your texting. I, I know you're busy working on other stuff. I don't know if you. Uh, I'm putting up. No, it's fine. I know. Up the graphic I know. I, I, that's why I, I just want to make sure you heard the question. If I heard it. Is your yeah, team? Yeah. Oh, and he's still not raising his. No, he's not. I think he's indicating to me that his team has lost. Oh, oof. Conference tournament. Oof. That's rough. Mm. Can't make it to Friday. Why would they do that? They were playing a team that they already beat twice. Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah. In Diana. I thought we had it. It's a good fight from the boys. But to no avail. Fell down ten to two to start the game. Came back. Fell down by eight again. Came back. But whatever. How do you view Mark the the Thursday and Friday of conference tournaments? Is this like um, is this like a, a stage rehearsal for you for next week, or is this just like, you know what? I I got I got twelve noon to midnight college basketball, and this is exactly where I want to be in my life. Damned. Damn. Yeah, it's a, it's more of a it's more of a rehearsal. It's more of a run through. It's more of a like get get your routine get used, down. Get your routine down. Get used to the uh, get used to like staying up till one a.m. Mm-hmm. and then the alarm hits at six and you're like, yeah, this is March. Let's get we're, right we're back. We're in to it. it. We're in it. You know. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think I, I think with the with the tournament coming next week, I don't think you can spend a lot of time. You know, Duke loses yesterday. Yeah. And as much as you want to be like, oh, fuck, dude, we did it. We knocked Duke. Like, they're they're right. Focus, everybody. Focus. And They're it, not dead yet. Yeah, like in two days, they're back to being very much alive. But them losing was awesome. But them losing was awesome. But, like, it's hard to – it's hard to feel – so, but it is a it's a nice taste. So to, to answer your question, it's like a rehearsal. It's like this is this is what it will feel like when Duke loses in the turn in the actual tournament. Yeah. We get a little bit of the feeling. And you're like, all right, that was a good run through. Mm-hmm. Now let's do it. <laughs> now let's do it for real uh, next week. Let's do it for real next week and and watch them lose and watch Filipowski. Do you notice? Uh, uh-huh. His, I did. His leg. <laughs> it's it the wildest thing. It goes in and out. <laughs> you could block out the score and the time and yeah. just focus on Kyle Filipowski's leg. Yeah. And if that man is limping, Duke is losing. They're in trouble. Yeah. They're in trouble. And if he is not limping, yeah. there's a good chance the Blue Devils are up 20. There was one time <laughs> where, where uh, DJ Burns, correct? Mm-hmm. Where Burns backed him down, went deep in the shot clock, faked over top of him and like scored. And Burns turned ran up the court. And Filipowski looked like he had been <laughs> shot. He was dragging... He was dragging his leg behind him. It was going – I think Duke immediately called a timeout because it was like a t- – um, they were trying to stop the momentum. And it took everything he had to somehow get off the court and go to, to, go to the bench. <laughs> but you're right. If, if there – and I was I was even thinking he limped all the way – he limped to the bench and then he limped onto the court for the offensive possession. And I just knew as soon as somebody sets a pick for him and he's open, that leg is going to be it's, yeah, fantastic. It's totally fine. You get the ball in his hands. What I will say, was though – Was he that, a dick last year and we just didn't notice? I don't think so. I think he I think the court storming thing it, it changed him. It changed him. It really did. I think it really did. I think he flopped with the court storming thing. And then at that point he was like the uh who's the nine eleven league guy? The league uh uh 
the guy that was on the league that said he was in the towers on 9-11. Oh, I don't – the show The League, I only yeah. watched one episode. I didn't like it. Somebody has to know what I'm talking about in this room. Nobody knows what I'm talking um, about. Steven Renazzi. Yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah. know this story? No. Kevin? No. Wow, okay. I thought this was like yeah. a – Wait, are you telling me the actual actor – yeah. I thought I thought this was like no, a, no, I I don't this know this. like a well known thing. <laughs> We've done uh, this on the air. Yeah, the guy on the league mm -hmm. for years and years was like I what, what was his story? I was in the towers on nine eleven. Yeah. yeah, he was working on the fifty fourth floor at Merrill Lynch. Yeah, and then come to find out he was not. He's like was, was he like not even in New York or he might have been in New York, but it was like He wasn't yeah, working and, there and or he, he had wasn't... to like issue an apology, but I don't even really know who he was apologizing to. He was just like Steve Renazzi's comedian who told of nine eleven escapes admits he lied. <laughs> Yeah. That's a, that's that's a tough thing to admit you lied about. Um, yeah, I was I was just trying to make the quick reference with Kyle Fabowski, but now we're here, so we're gonna. Uh, I think he had a he had a Steve. Red, how do you say his name? Red, 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 well, we're gonna say Renazzi. Ran a Zizzy. Ran a Zizzy. Yeah, Lombardozzi. I imagine what happened with that guy is he was just like, he kind of just. I don't know, actually. Dude, the I crazy thing is, I was working at Merrill Lynch yeah. at the time, and that became. And someone's like, "Oh, you're in the towers," and he's like, "Yeah, it, yeah." I yeah, guess, it, yeah. And then, and then he says that at like a party, and then everyone at the party's like, "Whoa, come here, come here!" This guy was in the tower, and then he's, he's like, "I guess I'm the guy that was in the towers." I feel like that happened with with Kyle Filipowski. Was like he he got hit, he kind of flopped on the court storm, and then at that point, yeah, that's let's his see, new let's, life. Let's see if Brandon can resist. At that point, he was in too deep. And he had to just, he had to just, uh, you know, just keep going down that road of. Uh, Wait, are you just doing song lyrics now? Just, yeah. just, he had to. He was going down the road feeling bad. He had to take um, it higher. Yeah, and you, you're just asking yourself, <laughs> can you take me higher? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, th I think that's what happened. I think that was the villain turn. It was like he. Yeah, he saw the way everyone reacted to that, and he's yeah. like, I, "This is who I am now. I have to make this my identity." But that's how villains in like comic book movies come to be villains, right? Like they, they're 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 going along normal life, they're a normal dude, and then something happens to them, whether they get mutated or get bit by or something or something, and they look down, and they're like, "Oh fuck." Yeah, I guess. I guess this is yeah. Oh. Uh. Oh, and now he's just an asshole for the rest of his life. He got his Duke superpowers. Uh, Connor, which villain in comics or sci-fi or really just any any form of movie or, or television or books, um, which villain had the best point of view in your estimation? Good good question. Which villain were you like? Oh, Thanos. Thanos. That's he, a good one. It's he a he you want half, half the universe, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's universe. a fucked up uh, thing to do, but the reasoning behind it that he has, you're like, fuck, he actually kind of has a point. He killed half the universe. Yeah, I know, but when he says what he, why he's doing it and everything, you're like, I don't agree with it, but kind of, you can see his reasoning. Connor might be pro genocide. No, I'm not pro genocide. I said I'm not for Thanos. I don't like Thanos, but <laughs> when he <laughs> kind of had a point, when he explains you it, sound like you're kind of you, you. You can kind of like get inside his brain a little bit and see where he's coming from. Ah. <laughs> Oh boy, there's a. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, I think there was a German painter who also believed some very similar things to Thanos. <laughs> that was, can you imagine if Connor what Phil had, had uh -huh. a, a, a point of view that you had, don't think is that bad? He just is like Hitler. <laughs> just. <laughs> I'll try and think of a better one. Shot from the hip. He's like, yeah. fuck it. Fuck it. I'll do it. I'll say it. <laughs> think of a better one. Okay, yeah. What about the um and he wasn't he But he but it, uh in Connor's I don't know why I'm doing this. This is this is not something I should do, but yeah. fuck it. Uh in Connor's defense, Thanos was not killing these people, right? He was he was just sna he was wiping away their existence, which technically is not killing, is more um hmm. Just like they never existed, right? Was it like a time paradox? It was just no, like no, 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 no. They, oh, they, they existed. How they existed. But how did like the they, how did Doctor Strange like go back into a, his fucking wormhole? Because that fucking fucking universe, Marvel or whatever, they started off. They had normal superheroes, normal everything, and then they got themselves so convoluted that all they come up with was, fuck. What if we just uh, I don't know a bunch of universes and time? Let's just change all that and get it right. That's that's all they did. Yeah, and it confused the hell. It out confuses of the hell out of everybody. Now so, in Spider Man, so, they're just going through ninety five universes and ninety five things. Just so Thanos, how about one universe. So the people, the people Thanos wiped that he snapped. Um, 
their loved ones would mourn their loss. Oh yeah. Oh well, that's fucked. Yeah, dude. because I didn't know guy, that. There was a guy who's the. Uh, I thought it was like the guy with the arrows. Let's just pretend like they never Hawkeye. existed. I didn't. Hawkeye know in the first scene of that is playing outside with his kids yeah. and his and his wife, and then they all just disappear. Which, know, by the way, the numbers really fucked him because mm-hmm. it was supposed to be half the universe. They took his whole family. Yeah, everybody mourns for like five years, and it's a very depressing time. And then we they should bring do we back. should do Thanos Day on the show. <laughs> We're half the show. Just, <laughs> we're three. Snap we're a- just yeah. We're we just don't do half the show has to leave for the entire show. <laughs> what was Thanos Day? Is it on the calendar? Is Thanos Day on the calendar? What would Thanos do? What are you be? looking at? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, as far as villains in, in in movies, Killmonger in uh, Black Panther had a point, didn't he? He did. That was a, that was a good point. Good point, Brian. Yeah, he ha- he had a point. Well, he was- it remind me of that one. I saw the movie, but I so he was. Okay, I only saw it like tw- once, maybe twice. He was living on Earth. Yes. He saw the Wakanda delegation come kill his dad or kill his, mm-hmm. his and, dad. And, and then he had ties to, and so when he got a chance to go avenge his dad, he just went and did it and then yeah. also kind of took over a little bit. Yeah. But he had a point. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And that he was, also that knew that. That was Michael B. Jordan, right? Yeah. 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 He knew that Wakanda was like sheltering weapons and they wouldn't give them to the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was good. That was that was nice, Brandon. Why do you I, keep? Well, you're overly. You're being overly praising. You're being a little. No, you're being a little condescending. Yeah, you're being you're a little. Being like, oh, exciting. Wow, well, well, Brandon made a point because that was a better are, answer. Are you going to pat his head? Come pat my head. <laughs> and do it in a real. Be a real dick about it. So anyway, I think um, I think Killmonger in Black Panther had a point. Like he had. That wasn't. That was barely. That was Duck Duck Goose. That was barely you're playing Duck Duck Goose on it. Yeah. Were you good at Duck Duck Goose? Were any of y'all? Nope. I bet is you it, were good. Is it? How can you be good at Duck Duck Goose? I don't know. Just be faster than the Duck Duck Goose was a lazy, a lazy game they came up with, right? Everybody sit down. We're gonna have one kid walk around and tap you, and then you just, y'all just run. How? F- There's how, never a winner, is how there? How fat and slow do you have to be to get? If you're the guy doing the the ducking and the ducking and the goosing, yeah. To get you've tagged. got such an advantage. You have an insane advantage. Not only are you already standing, yeah. but you you're know the right direction. You know where you want to go. You know the moment when the race starts. You know who you're going to pick. You know yeah. who you're going to pick. If you lose that game as the ducker, as the duck duck gooser, yeah, you're you're a bad. You're you're bad. <laughs> you're you're bad. <laughs> you're bad. Uh, uh, I think the Incredibles guy. Who was the villain in the Incredibles? Syndrome. Syndrome. He had a good point of view. I think. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, like I think Syndrome. he did too. I remember watching that movie and I was like, I'm kind of on Syndrome side, dude. Like, Mr. Incredibles, he was a, dick, a fucking dick to him. Fucking dick, dude. And like, he gave him multiple opportunities to not be a dick. And, and all he Incredible, wanted was just, just, just a little attention. Hang out every now and then. And yeah. Listen to my ideas. And instead, uh, you just treat me like I'm a nobody. He also has a sick ass line in that movie where he's like, "If everyone's super, no one will be." I just love that line. It's not that good. That's a good point. If everyone's super, no. What's one a good point? You just him saying no, no, no. The the point that Syndrome makes. Because he's trying to make everybody super. He's trying to make everybody well, it might be a good point, but it's not a good line. Which would be the death of superheroes. Like, it's a pretty good line. It's an okay line. If everyone's super, then no one will be? Yeah. I don't know. That doesn't... Syndrome had a point. Yeah. How about Darth Vader? Did he have a... When he uh, when, when he turned on Captain Kirk, did he have a point? Dude. When when they, when they when the, they had the war of the Enterprise and the Death Star... Who, who had a point there? We're trying to have a nice Friday. We're trying to, you know, have a good time. And I felt like when Vader killed Yoda, um, I when I remember when I where I was when I watched it, I was like, this is this is heavy, but also, yeah, I'm not on Vader's side. I just kind of Yoda like, Yoda was talking a little sassy, yeah, and I felt like, yeah, you know, he had a point, which is what we're talking about. And I what, felt I feel like Vader had a point. What do you think? I just despise this entire conversation that we're having right now. Evo, do you not know how to spell Jake Diebler's last name? No. You, you've done this <laughs> that about, seems fair. like five times. I before E except after C. I and you do e the exact opposite yeah. every time. Yeah. Because sometimes so, but, the names but, is different. Yeah, you just you, said the, the... You just said the you thing. Right, the rules. Right. I before E, and every time you write it on the prep sheet, put the E before the I. Because sometimes in names you go E before the I. But not in this name. Correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, what, what does he have to do? Because a lot of people are talking about Jake Diebler. Uh, what does he have to do to get the, to lose the interim tag and be the head coach 
at Ohio State, be named the head coach at Ohio State, uh, because I think when he took over as interim head coach, there was not a serious belief that he would be taken seriously as a candidate. Yeah. Um, but now the Buckeyes are rolling. We're, we're hot. If we win today, I think we're in the NCAA tournament. The real question I have is what what does this man have to do for Ebo to be able to spell his name correctly? Make the tournament. Make the tournament. Yeah. If if Ohio State makes the tournament, you will respect Jake Diebler enough. Mm -hmm. to Are you him. guaranteeing that you're uh, you'll be able to spell every single NCAA tournament coach's name correctly by the time the tournament comes around? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there will be 68 coaches that now he knows how to spell. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a kind of a question. I'm gonna turn that question on its ear and, and then point it towards you. Okay. Because it feels like you came into this tournament saying two games and we're in. Two games and we're in. You've won one, mm -hmm. which means now you have another game, and if you win that one, you feel like you're in. It feels like the national media or pundits don't believe that's the case. So right. who's right here, you or them? Um, the national media threw a, they wrote us off. They threw us in the garbage, mm -hmm. and they haven't taken the time to realize – that hmm what do you throw away in the garbage that crawls out of the garbage so they threw away <laughs> what could what could possibly what do you what do you have to go dig back into the garbage to eat well, well you did this not too long ago <laughs> your, that was chick-fil-a your chick-fil-a order so um i don't know they threw something like you you accidentally left like your like something valuable in the garbage yeah and only you know it's there right and now you're you, you're gonna have to dig through their trash and get it right. out. Right, I have to dig through their trash and get it out. Um, no, I, I, I don't even say that. I mean, obviously, I am biased, but I, I think Ohio State. If we beat Illinois, our wins are fucking insane. And and you stack up our wins against the bubble wins. Um, it's night and day. And I, I'm getting. If we beat Illinois, I am going resume hunting, dude. I'm looking at. And I'm sorry if Mississippi State comes up. It's just. It's the fog of war. Well, you're not coming after us. I'm, I'm officially, if we beat Illinois today, I'm stepping into the fog of war, and I'm fucking firing shots at every bubble resume that exists. Yeah. I'm already, we're, we already have our sights locked in on Dayton, who's not even on the bubble somehow. Dayton has beat maybe one NCAA tournament team all season, uh -huh. and they are somehow a lock for the NCAA tournament when they're just shitting down their leg at the the, the at the end of this season. Um uh, we would have an insane run of wins, and uh, I think we're in. So I, I think the committee is paying attention. I think the bracketologists are not, and that's okay by me because the committee is all that matters. Well, according to the Delphi bracketology update, Mississippi State's comfortably on the 10 line. Uh, so we're just as in as we could possibly be. Um, and I don't see – they don't have Ohio State yet in the first four out, but the Delphi guys are working hard right now. They'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, they're the, – the Delphi and, – and for the record, Delphi or, or anyone else, if you want um, – if you want me to love your bracketology, you need to put Ohio State. Put Ohio in. State in, and I'll talk about it, and I'll I'll retweet it. Um, yeah, if we be if we beat Illinois, I promise to retweet anybody that says Ohio State should be in the tournament. Anybody? Yeah, it'll be anybody. a media member. If I could see be it, like if I see it, okay. Like obviously, there's going to be a lot. Everybody's going to be talking about. It. I might just like do literally it. the whole world's going to be talking. I might just do it now. Is it too early to do it now? Wow. I'll do it now. Do it now. Do it. We don't have to beat Illinois. Just anybody that says Ohio State should be in the tournament, <laughs> I'll give you the retweet. Um, yeah. So it's a fun time of year, Brandon. It is fun. It's fun to it's fun to feel something. Mississippi it State is. is in. I I don't I don't think you guys are on the bubble. And I'm saying I'm not saying that to yeah. troll you or whatever. I, I do think that you guys are comfortably in. You're going to play Tennessee today, right? I think I'm ready to go uh to go live with my my Hubbard take. That I'm ready to take on the world with it. I completely. I, I I'm okay. ready. You've before been you do, you've been before, trying to stop me with this, but before you do, I want to say that what happens, whatever happens next, I do love Josh Hubbard. Uh, I I think he's an incredible basketball player. I love watching him play, and nothing I say next um, takes away from that. Okay, now say what you want to say. <clears throat> Let me get some stats up here. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They give away awards in college basketball. They give away in the Southeastern Conference. They give on a, give out an award called the Southeastern Conference Freshman of the Year. You got that? They yeah, give out I'm that listening. award. I'm listening. They give out. I'm, the, I'm getting my stats ready. <laughs> they give out the <laughs> the conference uh, Freshman of the Year, which means if you are a freshman in that conference, you have a chance to win that award. All right. Now in the SEC. Reed Shepard, a remarkable player, potential top five pick, very talented guy from Kentucky, 
won that award. He won that award by averaging 12.7 points a game. He certainly had moments. Damn, he beat us with a buzzer beater. He beat us, and uh, of course that day he didn't score as much as Josh Hubbard, but he scored 32 points and he beat us with a buzzer beater. He is a very good player, a remarkable player. He simply didn't deserve to win SEC Freshman of the Year when Josh Hubbard at Mississippi State averages 17 points a game, five more points a game, has hit plenty of big shots this year, uh, starts, doesn't come off the bench. This is a guy, Josh Hubbard had the better season than Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard might be a more talented player. Josh Hubbard should have won. He was robbed. 17 points a game, uh, and he's not SEC Freshman of the Year. A guy that averaged 12 points a game is Freshman of the Year. That's bullshit. All right. Yes, it was it was a valiant effort, but uh, I'm right. Not even close to right. Reed Shepard averaged almost five assists coming off the bench. He averaged like three steals a game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. He's on a way better team. <laughs> what, what's it? What, way better is a lot. They're better. Way They're better. better. Team. They just we just played way last week. It went to overtime team. basically. Way better. It went to overtime basically. <laughs> way better. It went to overtime basically. <laughs> I love. I like you fighting for your guy. Yeah. Um, Josh Hubbard. I think he's the most under-talked about guy in America. Yeah, like, he yeah, is yeah. unbelievable. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah, and especially he's on a team, and I, I'm I, I'm not trying to troll. I'm just being honest. Like, your your offense is dog shit still. It, it is. And he's got to just be the guy that's like, he I'm going to go He has to do everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, to have that responsibility mm-hmm. as a freshman is Scored crazy. 24 yesterday. Yeah. Um, and the game that Reed Shepard, Reed Shepard scored 32 and start will hit the game winner. Hubbard scored 34 and hit that game tie. But there's shot. a reason. There's a reason your argument ran out of steam after you pointed out he averaged more points, and then you're like, he he averaged more points. He also had more points. Uh, <laughs> right. He, he scored, scored more. Scored more. <laughs> and Reed Shepard scored. Reed less Shepard's than that. a phenomenal player. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, it's based on it should be based on the season you have, not the uh, not your draft hype and all that. Just let me fight for my guy, man. Let me fight. For I'm letting you fight for your guy. Reed Shepard. I, I can't. You know, I have to also step in and. You don't have to. All right, I won't step in. No, Josh, Josh Hubbard. No more stepping. He he's amongst the best freshmen in the SEC for sure. How about that? Um, what else? What else yesterday? Well, I want to talk about Dave and Buster's before Go we. Ahead. A, with all this basketball going on, you're probably wondering where's the best place to watch basketball this March. Well. Dave and Buster's, I nominate them. 86% of American employees will spend at least some time at work keeping track of March basketball. Stop pretending to work. Watch the games at Dave and Buster's. On March 21st, Dave and Buster's Nationwide will have an all-day happy hour to celebrate the first full day of games. That is one week from yesterday, I believe. So stop pretending to work. Come out to Dave and Buster's on March 21st for all-day happy hour and all-day basketball. Mm Mm-hmm. Love some Dave and Busters. Yes, Connor. Oh uh, no, I was just curious. I don't know where you guys want to go, but I was just wondering what the ceiling for Duke is. National championship. Is it? It still is. I don't they're, think it is. They're that team is soft as hell, man. They're soft as hell, but they're talented as hell. They're talented, That's but the problem. Both times I've seen them, I, and the both times in the last couple of weeks I've seen them. North Carolina popped them in the face early. And yeah. the NC State popped them in the face early, and they just they. That's when they start to limping. Yeah. And there's no other. Like, if Filipowski is going to do his limping thing, there's no leader on that team to say, God damn it, I'm going to score nine points in yeah. three minutes and we're going to win this game. They don't have a good uh, huddle at the free throw line guy. No, they don't have that guy. <laughs> they don't have – They don't have. but they don't have – The best The best Duke teams through the years have always had a guy that a yeah. foul is called, we're about to shoot free throws. He's like, get your fucking come on, ass in come here. He's grabbing jerseys. Yeah. Um, And he's usually not even the best player. It's usually like a Greg Paulus type. Yeah, but uh, I just don't, don't think really they have, have that, that second. It's supposed to be great Jeremy player. Roach, and he's not really that dude. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree with you. They're soft as hell, but they are just so fucking talented that um, their their absolute peak seal. Like if Duke does go on to win the national championship, you can't really be stunned by it. You'd be. You'd be I think I might be stunned. Really? Yeah, I think I might be stunned. I just don't think they have the makeup. I, and, and there's been Duke teams that have won it from the two or three or four seed position, but they've had makeup where you see, I this team, this team just doesn't look like they enjoy each other. They don't look like yeah. they don't look like a cohesive championship basketball team. Forget the name Duke on the jersey. They don't look like a team that's going to survive six battles, which is what somebody's yeah. going to have to do. I agree with you again, but you wouldn't be shocked. But the question is, what is their ceiling? Yeah. And I do think their ceiling is win a national championship in the same way that, like, I'm trying to think of the college football equivalent this year. 
somebody who didn't play well, uh, but but still. But like you're like they do have the talent. Like you what? know what, Colorado. Who Colorado had a path. <laughs> Colorado had a path all season. They were loaded with talent. Um, I, I don't think the, that's the ball true. bounced the wrong way for them a few times. Eight times. Um, but they had a path like pretty much all season. Mm, it, and I feel like Duke. I, has, I feel like that path has been overstated. I think that I path like, went away early. People were talking about that path well into the season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, people were. So I think uh, I think Duke is the Colorado of of college basketball, <laughs> but yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Like I'm not I'm not gonna have Duke in my Sweet Sixteen. I don't think. I think, well, I, think I don't think Duke's gonna like. like they, they're very soft, and I've said I say on my, I've said on my show for for months now about Duke. Like they are very much a team that lets the other team dictate the the terms. Of right the there, there it is. Yeah, I think like every every good. They team, played NC State the way NC State wanted to play last night. Houston's a good example. Like you watched the Houston TCU game yesterday. The ball yeah. tips off and Houston's like, watch this. We're playing Houston fucking basketball. Yeah, this game will be played. If you're gonna beat us, you're gonna have to beat us playing Houston basketball. Yeah, we're gonna kick your fucking ass. Yeah. Um, Duke is like, what kind of basketball you guys want to play today? <laughs> well, well, you Ooh. guys, you guys, these guys won't shoot. Okay. Oh, they want to, You guys want to run? All right, we'll try to run. <laughs> oh, it's a rock fight. All right, we'll try to play a rock fight. They have like no idea what their identity is as a team, other yeah. than just we're talented and we hope we figure it out. Um, yeah. But the thing about it is, if it's a rock fight, then uh, midway through the second half, Filipowski's going to fake an injury. Yeah. But if it's a run and gun, midway through the second half, he's gonna he's gonna fake an injury. Yeah. <laughs> so. You really gotta, you really gotta keep up with it. The big, never mind Filipowski flopping and crying and and all that shit and Duke uh, being a little soft. I the 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 biggest red flag for me for Duke right now is John Shire apologizing to the camera crazies after losing to North Carolina. Yeah, that's something I wish I could unsee. Something's missing from that program now that was previously there. I don't know if it was just the dickheadedness of Coach K, but to have your head coach, Coach K would have never apologized to the seniors. He would have. <laughs> He would have had the student section apologize to him. Yeah. He would have been like Although I think he Did he? I think he did on the I think he did on his last game at Cameron. Did he apologize? Oh yeah, okay, I remember. Didn't he grabbed the microphone? Yeah, he yeah. Damn. Yeah. He goes this was unacceptable and they and they if I remember right, oh my god, dude. I'm going to I get it. But I did need, he I need, I need a pillow to cover my boner. <laughs> did he subtly walk If I remember him? right, he walks up and he goes, "What happened on the court was unacceptable today." And the fans started booing him. Yeah, because they were like they were like booing the idea of the like Coach K is beating himself up, and the fans were booing him beating himself up. Yeah, and then he started yelling at the fans, saying, "No, I'm right." Oh my God, dude! What a I I, I might have to I, can we show we can't show that can we TJ the unacceptable just Coach K yelling this was unacceptable no no <laughs> <laughs> this is. Holy shit! What did? Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. I just took myself back to the end of Coach K's career, and it was so delightful. <laughs> were you Were you at that Final Four? No, I was at. Uh, I so I was at WrestleMania 38, and I was sitting behind. I was on the fourth row, and it was during a ma- whatever match was on. But I was watching a guy's phone over his shoulder when because that game was was close to the last close minute the whole time and then yeah. carolina just had a better last minute right kind of yeah yeah and, and then uh, I, I just remember thinking oh my god i'm watching two things are happening i'm at wrestle fucking mania for the first time in my life and coach k's career is ending in hysterical fashion it was an amazing moment i'm sorry about this afternoon yeah he did apologize and then i think they broke. I like that slow walk oh. look he's like shut the everybody shut the fuck up shut the fuck up No. This is in part of the program. This is in part of the program. I'm sorry about this afternoon. That no, please. No. no. <laughs> please, I don't want to be quiet. Let me just say it's unacceptable. It's funny. Today was unacceptable. Is he going for? The season has been very acceptable. Is <laughs> <laughs> he? Was he trying to be like, even at my ceremony they're having for me, I'm going to show how humble I am. I'm going to watch this. What What was he going for? I have no idea. It, oh, what was he ever uh, going for, though, really? Yeah, John John Shire uh, apologizing was, was something. Was only at Duke, man. Only at Duke. Um... What are, the, got, what are the games today then? What are the what are the uh, I I'm I'm new. I, have you been on the bubble before, Mississippi State? Like, when's the last time? <laughs> Buddy, I, I, 
I was molded by the bubble. I was uh, I I was born into the bubble. I I being a Mississippi State fan is basically being a bubble fan. Yeah, just being a uh, in every sport pretty much. Because I need your help. Uh, now don't act like. I mean, well, I'm not. Ohio State is. We we don't spend a lot of time on the bubble. We're either dog shit or we're comfortably in. Um, it's not. I don't want to say we've never been on the bubble. It's happened yeah. a handful of times, but this isn't something I'm particularly used to. So what I'm asking you, Brandon is how do I go about watching the games today? Because Jake Marsh introduced the idea of bid stealers to me yesterday. Yeah. No, no, don't, don't, don't. This is what yeah, people yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. Don't. Exactly. Don't. This don't your get your mind this. caught up in all of that, okay? People will be like, oh, this this is a bid stealer. This stole this, this, this. No. Who are you playing? Illinois? Illinois. We're, 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 we're worried about on one Illinois. game. One That's game. Okay. We win that, we're worried about another game. Okay. But we're not worried about what happens in Hawaii. We're okay. not having uh, worried about what happens in San Jose State. Nothing. Because yesterday I'm watching and uh, we're, we're watching like a, the, the Pitt-Wake um, Forest game, and both of those teams are on the bubble. Seton Hall-St. John's, both of those teams are on the bubble. Excuse me. And I'm trying to figure out which team to cheer for, who's more on the bubble, but then like if the team that's slightly ahead of the other team wins, mm -hmm. they might secure their spot and they're no longer on the bubble. So yeah. am I actually cheering for them to lose, but then the team that's kind of not on the bubble, now they're on the – and I'm like, what? I'm trying to figure out all these calculations. I feel like I get to a good spot. And then at halftime of the Ohio State game, Jake Marsh, as NC State's like beating Duke, Jake Marsh just kind of leans over, and in a way only Jake Marsh can. And yeah. he's like, NC State, bid stealer. And I go, what? Yeah, and he goes, he can't. He, that's. And he goes, you can't say that to a bubble fan. And he goes, yeah, NC State. Uh, you know, they're t two wins away from. Uh, yeah. And I was like, I, I was like, I'm not worried about NC State. NC State's not even close to the bubble. And he's like, yeah, but bid stealer. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not even. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. And then I just I started spiraling because I was like, I'm so consumed with like right. watching the other teams on the bubble and hoping they lose. Yeah. It's never crossed my mind that there's another pot of teams. Mm -hmm called the bid stealers that I have to worry about. And now my world is completely rocked and I'm spinning, but you're telling me block out the noise. Okay, this is like Illinois. This is like you come to work and you're nursing a slight headache and I lean over about halfway through the day. Might be cancer. <laughs> Might be cancer. You weren't previously worried about cancer. I wasn't. Cancer, I was not. But now that's all you can that's think all I'm about. That's about. So, uh no. Focus. Now, uh, let me let me throw this idea at you. What if we turn the bubble into a reality? What if the bubble what if we have a tournament at a bubble, inside a inside bubble? Inside a bubble. We don't televise it. We just throw six teams in, and they play, and then somebody comes out of the bubble. Yeah. And then we just realize, hey, oh, fuck, Ohio State looks like they th – They survived the bubble. Mm -hmm. Now you're the bubble champions. Yeah, and we don't televise it. We probably should televise it, though. <laughs> Can we get cameras inside the bubble? We don't. Are they? Are we sure they're even playing basketball? What if it's? What if we? What if we throw one knife in the bubble? <laughs> we just throw one knife in there. And we see what happens. <laughs> Do we explain to them what the knife is for, or we just throw it out there? Just we we, we throw them on the bubble. We say good luck. <laughs> we shut the door, but then we open the door real quick. Drop a knife. Throw in. a knife and then shut it again and lock it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and let's just see what happens. A <laughs> hundred and twenty. A hundred and twenty college basketball players were murdered today. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, but Ohio State looks good. I'm not going to worry about. Don't worry about it. On. I'm I'm locked in on Illinois. I was I was going to I was going to try to set up like a what are the games we need to be watching today mm -hmm. type thing, but um fuck all the other games. There's one game I care about. It's Ohio State Illinois. You guys are uh cuz you guys play Tennessee, which is actually a good thing for you cuz if you lose to Tennessee by 30, I think it does nothing for your I think we're fine. Yeah, yeah. you're fine. And I I do believe we're probably going to lose to Tennessee yeah. by 30. We beat them earlier at our house and now it's uh but that's okay. That's okay. Guys, that's guys, okay. You guys will be in. Dalton connects a cold ass white boy. Um, uh, TJ, how do we want to do the the main one here? Yeah, speaking of cold things, shall we? Sure. Just talk about. I want to talk about uh our good friends at Jagermarsh. Speaking of of names that are E before I, mm. Ebo. Maybe this is why you have E before I on your brain. Jägermeister is the sponsor of the Damn That's Cold Minute. They are also the presenting sponsor of Mostly Sports. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now going to go through our Damn That's Cold moments from the world of sports yesterday. And we're going to do a shot of Jägermeister to celebrate them. Damn! Damn! That's cold! Ice cold! Damn! That's cold. Connor, do Ice one. Cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Uh, no, 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 no. no, no. More on the damn. Damn! That's cold. We're going to do, do a shot. Um, and you're going to say it, but I want you to practice 
Do it like you just took a shot of Jägermeister and you're just like, mm, damn, that's... Yeah, I like that. Like, like, like this is the first time you've ever had a shot of cold Jägermeister. Mm -hmm. By the way... And you're kind of surprised by it. This is awesome. Yeah. It's a How, great contrast. What do you, do you think it's cold? It's very cold. What well, does that surprise you? Not at all. Jägermeister. What, of course it's... Does it surprise you a little bit? No, 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 no. Does it make you say, damn. Well, yeah. Damn, that's cold. Okay. Uh, my damn that's cold moment from the sports yesterday. Did y'all see uh, Pat Bev at the end of the game go uh, go throw the ball to Nick Nurse? Yep. Just just walk over there and like, hey, hey, fu little, little little fuck you. Like, here's here's the ball. I didn't, I didn't see that actually. Yeah, at the end of the uh, well, I guess the helmet has to be the the Bucks and Sixers, right? Yep. Because that's who those two teams guys play for and coach for. Um, the Bucks beat the Sixers, and at the end he dribbles. Uh, way out of his way, goes down and just chunks the ball at the at Nick Nurse. Ball doesn't make it to Nick Nurse. I does think he, another player knocked it away. So, ignorant question: Does does Pat Bev have a problem with Nick Nurse? Because I thought he, I thought it was Daryl Morey he hated. Uh, I hate him all now. I guess like that's kind of Pat Bev is a guy that just like seems like he's always just swinging. Yeah, and he's yeah. There's a lot of collateral damage. Yeah, his punches, but that's okay because he's a chip on the shoulder. That's, that's guy, how he plays. That's how he's got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think there was anything necessarily directed towards Nick Nurse. I think it's just that we told him that he was going to be a Sixer, and yeah. then we traded him. It was, was Nick just... Nick Nurse is the representation of the Sixers. Yeah. So it was more of a yeah. – I, I haven't seen the clip also. I should say that. What was know. your damn that's cold moment? But my my damn that's cold moment was uh shot, the, 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 the sideline out of bounds play that Shaka Smart drew up yeah. uh, in Marquette Villanova. Did you see this? I did see and it. It didn't count. And I and it broke my heart. I still don't know how that didn't count. It was so close. Didn't they count it on the floor? They counted it on the floor. And, and then I, they still I didn't over I know I, there's That was probably, tough for me too cuz I I felt like he might have still had it in his hand, but I did, I don't think you can overturn. I don't think you 100% like it I think it possibly was lifting out of the hand. I thought that was a little bit light for an overturn. We we lost the plot very quickly with instant replay um this is not a new phenomenon but yeah. instant replay was instituted for like yes when the runner beat the throw by a step and a half yeah let's the guy, fix that and the guy called him out they watch it for two seconds and they're like we fucked that up okay fix. Yeah. now they're they're zooming in they're well that go by pixel like you shouldn't be doing all that with instant replay and i know we've done this for well over a decade now but um that was a good example to me. It's like you called it good. Yeah. Watch the replay two times, and if you can't tell, you had to watch it very hard. Yeah, if you can't tell, obviously you should count it. And it, it, it and Marquette ended up winning the game too, which is especially frustrating because that was an all-time sideline out of bounds play to win a Big East tournament game. And I was like, I when, when I saw Shaka Smart do that, I said this. I said, "Damn, oh yeah, damn, that's cold." I said it like that. Come get your shots, boys. Damn. Um, I'm very interested to try the cold brew product that we have. I've never tried this before, but if we could get that in there next, that'd be great. This oh, that'd be real awesome. nice. Connor's getting the uh, the Jaeger shots for the boys. The That's Friday so morning good. Shot. That is so good. Damn, that's cold. I'll be honest, and this is this is why Jaegermeister is is a presenting sponsor. I they're see. They're I trying see a little to, bit of joy in your eyes, right? Yeah, because they're trying to 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 get the word out. Um, I have not drink. I, I damn I, that's cold. Yeah, there you go, Evo. I have not had a lot of cold Jägermeister in my life. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of uh, most of my Jägermeister experiences in college mm -hmm. were, you know, warm bottles of Jägermeister. And this is the importance of us trying to tell the people. Well, they're right. They are Jägermeister is absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah, you serve up that ice cold Jägermeister. There's nothing better. I don't know why, why, uh, why we've all been so stupid for so long, but. Damn, that's cold. Damn, that's cold. Uh, uh, remember to check Jägermeister out at Jägermeister.com. Drink responsibly. Jägermeister, the core, 35% alcohol by volume. Imported by Mass Jägermeister, U.S. White Plains, New York. You ever been to White Plains? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even a joke. <laughs> but now I see. I mean, yeah. now I see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> Y'all want to do the uh, the buzzer beater now, the high school buzzer beater? Ooh. There was a good one last night. Yep. Oh, there was a real good one. There was this team, or Arano. Arano? Uh, Orano. Aranos. Ar Arano. It's Orano. Thanos, Thanos is cousin, Aranos, started <laughs> in high school. Uh-huh. Uh, he was a little more humble than Thanos. Thanos wanted world domination. Aranos just wanted to win a state championship. Yeah. In, uh, it was just about ball. In what state is this? 
Um, oh, it was it was Arono, Arono. It was Arono against Benel de Saint Margaret, which is well, of course that state is. That uh, feels like um uh, Arono's. Do you want to go back and forth and guess the? I th- state? Oh, you already know it. No, I'm I'm looking it up, but I think my guess is Minnesota. I think I've heard of Arono. I think it might be. Is he right? Yep. Oh, okay. Damn well. I think Arono has that come up in high school basketball before. Oh really? Yeah. What was was the on his ass shot Arono? That oh, was Minnesota. That was that was Sam Decker. No, that was Hoffarber or something like that, right? Oh, Hoffarber. Kyle, Sam Decker was Sam Decker hit a last second shot to win state. Hoffarber was the one. Yeah, Hoffarber. That was from his ass. Was I was was he Arono? Because that's what it was reminding me. of. Hoffarber was so good, dude. Hoffarber was yeah. Oh my just god! Just sitting on that his ass hitting miss. the hitting the uh, at Minnesota. He was he's one of the great college basketball Blake? shooters. Everybody Blake Hoffarber. About. Yeah, yeah. I know this isn't right, but my memory of Blake Hoffarber is he shot seventy eight percent from the three point line. On okay. nine and a half attempts a game. <laughs> Damn, that's cold. <laughs> um, can we see the one? So, okay, so I don't know. If, play the clip that has all three buzzer beaters because this game was crazy. Go. So they're down. The other team's down three. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, we're going to overtime. Nice little team that was, storm here. They're down three. Yep. You banked that in to go to overtime. Yep. In the playoffs, that's huge. And that's – I guess that's the other team? That's the – Yeah, Benedict BSM. Saint. BSM. Oh, he's – uh-oh. Oh, can pause oh, right no. there. Go oh, back, go what, back, go back. What was he doing? Go back. Was he being sassy? Look at – The five? Freezer right there. Free, oh, 33. Oh, Look at 33. You can't wave goodbye oh, yet. No. 33 is waving goodbye to oh, the other oh, team no. section. Oh, no. On a game-tying shot. It's going to overtime, and we're waving oh, goodbye. Oh, no, 33. All right, now this is – they're down two in, in overtime. Bang. We're going to double overtime. And they're very calm about it. Yeah. They're just like, all right, well, we, we're going to get them now. We're going to get them. No waving. You can tell that's – No the, waving. You can tell those, it, it, yeah, the, those are the guys that are going to win, right? Yep. So, bang, they're down two now. This is crazy. He has to fight. He has to fight. He has to fight. I mean, that's Unbelievable. Just, that's just that's just ball Chills. right there, man. Chills. That's just ball right there. That is beautiful. God, I love it. I wish I, I love high school. That's the. I would like to chase that across the country. Just just go find that. Dude, moment. I. Uh, it's impossible, but as as college sports become more perverted and and you know just do everything about money and TV contracts and yeah. shoe companies and all yeah. this shit and I. Watching high school sports, I think, yeah. might be where it's at, and I think, I think I might just become a high school sports fan because they, they it, that is the new college sports. Mm-hmm. They just do it for the love of the game, and in fact, I think they should start televising high school sports more. I think we need to pump more money into high school sports to give them a bigger platform. I think coaching contracts should be. Uh, I think we should incentivize coaches to want to coach high school sports. So I think we should be giving them lucrative contracts, and I think. Uh, I think that's what needs to happen at the high school level because I, I, I like that is you can't beat that, dude. That's that, those are moments that make sports great, and I think we should throw a lot of money at those moments because all the college sports have kind of jumped the shark for me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that's where we're headed. By the way, I think I think I think it's just going to keep trickling down. I think there's going to be a time where, like, if you want true amateurism, let me you tell have, you something. You have to watch like fourth grade basketball. These middle schoolers these days. <laughs> They play it for the love of the game. They know that this is their last year in middle school. You only get two years of middle school. And this is <laughs> Baby Gronk is oh, this an is NIL the, uh, deal. This is the um, two years of middle school. Baseline view. Oh, yeah. You only get two years of middle school? Okay, so that's a yeah, great question. On. That's yeah. a great question. I think this varies throughout the, the country. It's not two years of middle school? I never, when I was coming up in Mississippi, we didn't have anything called middle school. We went from elementary school to junior high school to high school. Well, junior high school is junior high and middle school. Okay, the same. so that's the same thing. The so same we thing. called it junior, junior high. high school. We never once called it middle school. We also called it junior high. I just said middle school. What were they? Okay. Uh, so my my junior high grades were uh, um, seventh and eighth. Correct. Yeah, that's yeah. same for us. Okay. Can I throw a real curveball at you? Yeah. 
So Northern Virginia was growing so fast in like the uh, 60s and 70s yeah. that they didn't have enough time to build the middle schools and the high schools. So they started building what were called secondary schools. So we have a bunch of schools that are 7 through 12. Oh. But all of your splits are after so – my middle school, I went to one school for K through 3, one school through 4 and 5, mm-hmm. one school for 6, 7, 8, and then yeah. high school. Wait, what would you oh, call the same, school that same was school, seven 4 through 5? Five. 4 through 5. Intermediate? Just on River. I think my mom taught at a district that had an intermediate. Yeah, well, fourth like, is elementary. Like fourth right? and fifth. Yeah, fourth is still elementary. Yeah, but if he's going to a different school for fourth grade, yeah, and I don't like know how across the street from the middle school. Well, the way my it was school only for fourth grade. So fourth and fourth and fifth went to Millstone River, and then the next we went next door to Community Middle School for right. six, seven. My eight, mom and did that. across the street to high school. We had grade. West Side for kindergarten, then we had East Side for first grade, then we go to South Side. Whoa. South Side was two, three, four. Then we go to Central, which was fifth and sixth. Then went, then I went to Fifth Street, uh, but I got lucky with Fifth Street because I only had to go there for a year because they opened up the new West Point Junior High in 1992. Now it's thirty something years old. We might have replaced it soon, but now no, so you go there, and then we're at the high school, and there's that's. What is the? Uh, this is a great question for Brandon Walker, mm-hmm. uh, and and really me too. I th- I feel like we could have a fun discussion about this, Brandon. What is this the? This is gonna be fun. The you're gonna have a great time. Get ready. Buckle up. <laughs> What are what are what is the number one marker to you of a small town? Where if I'm trying to tell you about the town I'm from, yeah, and I say this specific thing, you're like, oh shit, I can picture it now. Is it is it a flashing one flashing red light? Is it because I, the reason I bring this up is I was talking to Tate yesterday, mm-hmm. and he mentioned that he taught in a district that had one K through twelve school. Okay, and I was like, damn, that's a small town. Like the second he said, yeah, they have one building, it's K through twelve, yeah. I immediately was like, say no more. That's a small town. But then I was thinking, if you said we went to a church at a one room church. Yeah. And you just walk in the front door and you're already you're it's there and it's just a bunch of pews and that's the church. Um flashing red lights, another good one. Flashing red lights. You know, how many how many stoplights a town? Like if if a town has a number of stoplights required to say that's how many stoplights it has, then it's a small town. Yeah. But like you wouldn't you wouldn't describe uh, a mid sized town as man we have uh, we have forty four stoplights yeah but if you have less than three if you can just if you can co- count the number of stoplights correct if you can count the number of stoplights also the number of horses one horse town <laughs> <laughs> um what is one one horse town is yeah that would be a very small town that's right? a very small town but there are probably a lot of one horse towns. But that doesn't make sense because how many horses are in do Chicago? Do they share the horse? How many horses are in the city limits of Chicago right this second? Do, do they sh- do they do they like? Oh well, it's my turn to ride the horse today, or is it just one guy who can one afford to have a, a horse? horse? Yeah. So how would the other people get there? They just a, were always question. there. It's a great question. I don't know. How many kids went to your high school? Um, West Point is usually around um, probably a, a nine through twelve, probably around. 900 to 1200 i think my, we had my graduating class had 182 I yeah we had we had, i was a big high school we had like 450 in we our graduating 450, class. Yeah. yeah i think we had 4000 i w- total like i was on like the grades. bubble though like yeah. whatever year 97 was like a huge birth bubble or something in the northeast for some reason. oh really when i turned 18 all i think the, there was a the blizzard like pregnant. the year before <laughs> something like that where there was, was like the, a yeah. record amount of kids the night the blizzard of 96 yeah mm-hmm. the a blizzard. lot of 96 blizzard babies and mm-hmm. brandon NBC. walker turns 18 and pussies go wet all <laughs> <laughs> all across <laughs> the northeast yeah the northeast so well, everyone heard. in the northeast heard about this southern boy. Oh, it didn't do <laughs> who came of age. Didn't do anything to the southeast. <laughs> southeast didn't. Those women didn't give a fuck. Word uh, spread. Hmm? Is that the true? Word there spread. Was, there was a baby. There was widespread a panic. So I the seed. <laughs> yeah. Was I never panic un- about spreading. Ninety six blizzard animal. babies. I never understand. I never. It, it makes sense in theory. It's like people were having sex, so that's why they had a lot of babies. But like, that's 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 kind of insane. That's Mass like, sexings. It's kind of insane that it's like the reason our population exploded was because it got cold. It got cold once. <laughs> there was one day in 1996. Yeah, but dude, and you don't know how many, cold it got. That many people <laughs> were irresponsible with their uh, well, just, just with like you know preventative measures for pregnancy. We had that many unintended <laughs> but pregnancies. Just think if there, there's a couple that's like sitting, sitting there and uh, the temperature is like 40 degrees and they're just ignoring each other, ignoring each other, and then the snow starts to fall. Like, huh. All right, well, I'm going to go back to more snow. And at one point, you look out, and there's a foot of snow on the ground. Well, 
Guess we gotta fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're not just fucking. They're forgetting to pull out. They're for yeah. like it's. It's nothing better to do in 1996. Yeah. It's like yeah, I guess we'll. 96 was maybe maybe the best year. 96 was a great year. The 90s were the best, man. So good. The 90s were years so that end in six are just better. True. Huh? Years that end in six are the best years. Okay, hold 96, on. Let's work on that. 96. Really good year. Oh, just a second. 2006, excellent year. 2016, iconic year. For us, yeah, 2016 yeah. was um, the best year ever. 2016 was a great year. 1986, uh, Lynn Bias died, though. That's not That's good. That's true. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why we <laughs> I don't know why that's the first thing I remember about 1986. My, uh, that's gross, my little league baseball coach uh, is in the documentary about him because he sold. He was the ABC store attendant that sold him alcohol that night. Oh, isn't well, that I, crazy? I don't think the alcohol is the thing. Though. Right, right, right. But I think, uh, but that is crazy. Your little league coach was in a documentary yeah. about Lynn Bias, Mr. Cogburn. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a made-up name. His son's name was Marshall Rooster, Marshall Rooster Cogburn. <laughs> How good was Lynn Bias? Do you remember watching him? No, Lynn Bias is like right on that line of if he had played in 87 college basketball, I would have remembered him because I remember watching the 87 Final Four, but yeah. I don't remember watching the 86 Final Four. I remember in 86 waking up and finding out Louisville had beaten Duke, and I was young and stupid. And I Purvis liked, Purvis. I liked the Duke logo, and I, I, I was rooting for Duke, and I woke up, and the next day on the Today Show they said, oh, defend, our national champion Louisville. And I thought, man, the bad guys won. But I, little did I know what was coming. I don't want to make the argument that uh, dying was good for Lynn Bias. I'm not going to be one of those guys. But uh, but having never been alive at the same time as Lynn Bias, I've been led to believe that Lynn Bias was literally the exact same player as Michael Jordan, and he would have been Michael Jordan so, had, had he not died. He, he And I'm not, I'm not in any position to argue against that. It's just that's the legend that I've been sold. It's also how weird the NBA was back then. Back then – there were so many bad organizations that would just trade their picks or give away their picks or just not value anything. Like the Celtics won the 86. The Celtics were at the peak. Yeah, Lynn Bias, had won Lynn Bias was piece. added by the Celtics. He was going to be added to the 86 Celtics. So the 86 Celtics was were one of the greatest in the argument the for the best team ever. Yeah. And they had the number two pick, and they yeah. were going to get Lynn Bias. Yeah. And Lynn Bias was going to play alongside prime Larry Bird. Yeah. Um, but I, I did – this is weird, but I guess we're in that time where it's March. People, He comes up all the time. I saw a Lynn Bias highlight film yesterday our highlight package it was pretty damn good he was awesome there's there's one highlight i think he's playing north carolina that i've watched a thousand times where he steals the inbounds pass uh they, they he scores i think he hits like a, a mid-range jump shot um and then carolina takes the ball out and they throw it in and as they throw it in by Bi Bias steals it i think he takes one dribble the inbounder steps in. I might be misremembering this, so I apologize. But this it's been a long time since I've seen the clip. And he goes up to dunk it, and I think he turns his back to the inbounder and dunks on him yeah. backwards. Yeah. And that's all I needed to see where I was like, yeah, this guy's MJ. Is that where you got the inspiration to do that to me the other day? Yeah, when, yeah. Well, that's what I, I, that's what I said, bias. And you thought I was <laughs> – Yeah, I thought you were just being uh, slanted or just yeah, being – Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Louisville beating Duke, and then I – Said nervous Purvis Ellis. That was his nickname, right? Nervous Purvis. Never nervous Purvis. Never nervous. Never nervous Purvis Ellis. See, that's that's yeah. what I was going to bring up because uh -huh. my mind remembers nervous, and I was uh, like, nope. that's a horrendous nickname. Never nervous. Purvis Never Ellis. nervous. And but that's I a, felt like that's a fantastic. That's a fantastic nickname. nickname. It's a little wordy. Yeah, it is. But never nervous Purvis. I mean, that's. Never nervous, Purvis. That's that is a because I said I said that out loud and I was like that can't be that's a horrendous yeah. fucking nickname to be like yeah it's the guy who's always <laughs> it's the guy who's shitting his pants every time he oh, takes the court the uh, Louisville down one here with ten seconds left they give the ball to to nervous <laughs> Purvis <laughs> yeah and and they lose again they really got to stop trusting this guy <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I told you coach I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to do this. <laughs> Twin Peaks is the ultimate sports lodge with wall-to-wall -wall TVs for every fan. The Twin Peaks Dose Million Bracket Challenge is now open. Fill out your bracket today. TwinPeaksBracketChallenge.com. Every lodge has a winner. There's a $50 gift card for top bracket at every lodge, and the best bracket overall wins free Twin Peaks for a year. The perfect bracket wins $2 million. You can catch scenic views of every game all tournament long at the number one sports bar and take part in the Twin Peaks Dose Twin Peaks. Dose Million Bracket Challenge. Enter the Twin Peaks Dose Million Bracket Challenge today at TwinPeaksBracketChallenge.com. 
Uh, do we? we Jay, when are we gonna get us out? Get, get the mostly boys out to the Twin Peaks. We gotta get that going. Yeah. How do I get? I gotta come meet the fans of the Twin Peaks. They hit us up about this potentially being a thing that we do. Oh, yeah. Come see us at the Twin Peaks. We need to do some some Twin Peaks content. I think. Hmm. Uh, All right. We do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> new shirt, Brandon. Uh, it is a new shirt. Yeah, it's uh. I like it. It's my Shrek shirt. <laughs> Oh my! I didn't even realize that. It's yeah. a good shirt. Yeah, it's a lot I of, like the executioner guy. A lot, of, a lot of Shrek, Shrek guys. So three, my lord. Yeah. Um, three, number three. Shrek. Uh, so Shrek was I one would, of the happiest a movie ever made me. Shrek's so the first good. one. Yeah. Well, how bad is it that I've only seen the first one? It's right? fine, but Shrek Two is very good. very good. I have great news for you, Mark. What? They are re-releasing Shrek Two in theaters I, oh. even May I saw oh, that this yeah. is the 20th anniversary this year oh wow when if did you'd they like start to go? releasing sequels in their anniversaries I, that's a new one to me I, I've, I've seen the first ones get it done before you, and it's in May you said I, I believe so you want to go together I, listen, if you want to go see Dune 2 again, I'd gladly go with no, you. No, no, no. Shrek but I want to see Shrek, Shrek 2. And 2. Do they have a... <laughs> Shrek and I'm Shrek and 2. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they, is, is there going to be a fuckable popcorn bucket? Cause, honestly, dude... <laughs> This is this is just not this is not what I'm after. You could probably Can I get Fiona. You have no pop- imagination. <laughs> popcorn bucket is just Shrek's. <laughs> How would you fuck a Shrek popcorn bucket? I mean, Shrek's a Shrek's very human in his features. I think you know where Shrek fucks or get gets fucked. I mean, there's no there's no mysteries to Shrek. His ears. Ooh. Shrek would never let you fuck his ears. I'm going to say you... something that I want this to be a trust tree thing for me to say. <laughs> oh, boy. Right, oh, no. he, he's you're had this at the holster for a while. There's a guy online that makes videos where he, like, poses as a guy that collects fleshlights le- that are licensed, but actually he's just making them because there's no way these are actual products. And there he has made a video about a Shrek fleshlight before. <laughs> He's done one about like a bunch of the characters from Cars. Someone in chat is going to back me up that they've seen this guy before because I can't be the only one seeing these videos. He turned the Dune bucket into an actual flashlight. <laughs> now, TJ, just let me let me say this, and then you can you can have a rebuttal. Remember how I'm I talk, I'm talking to Brandon. Yeah. Let me let me let me let me talk to Brandon, and then you can rebut. Um, there are two ways TJ came across this guy. <laughs> two possible ways. One is ah. he sought this out. Um, and he was Googled Shrek he was googling light. where can I find a Shrek flashlight, uh-huh. and then he stumbled across a guy who's making a Shrek flashlight. This is somehow the the more innocent of the two possibilities. The other is that his algorithm is so perfectly curated for him that it it delivered Shrek flashlight content right to, to his, his door. doorstep. <laughs> there it is. The more, <laughs> which is the more concerning? situation <sighs> hmm <laughs> oh my god dude. what it what is that one what's the toes one i just want to make sure I'm now can we just d- d- since we're having a shrek Cinderella conversation is the toes one. <laughs> since we're having a shrek conversation oh my god princess fiona in, sh- in the first shrek beautiful right what are you about to say i want to hear what you have to say first <laughs> She's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful young lady, voiced by Cameron mm-hmm. Diaz, I believe. Mm-hmm. Then she turns into an ogre, correct? Yeah. But is she so beautiful in the daytime that you'd you'd go ahead and you'd go ahead and lock that down just to just to have that half? Or and well, what do you what do you do? One hundred percent. You got to right. Yes. You yes. Got to. You got to. I thought you're, you're going very emphatic about is, this. Is she? Is Shrek? Shrek is into the the ogre version of her though. Right? No. What well, do he. he he doesn't I, see I the ogre remember. version till the very end, okay. right? But he's into the human version. He, he's he, into the human he, version. He, he loves the human version. So Shrek, do you think Shrek is disgusted by the... <laughs> that, w- that would be on brand for men, by the yeah. way. It's like, I'm a fat, disgusting piece of shit, but my wife, she better be, <laughs> she better be in shape and hot. What's your take about Princess Fiona? I, I don't think that ogre Fiona is that bad. <laughs> but why, why would it... <laughs> If if Shrek is an ogre himself, wouldn't he? It's be not like she's ogre just, Fiona. Mark, stop! <laughs> what did he? What did he just say? We have, we have this beautiful, perfect princess by day. She turns into an ogre, and Connor's take is. 
I gotta tell you, like they don't make her out to be ugly when I she's an ogre. See, I need to see. I need to see Ogre Fiona. Wood. <laughs> so, so. Oh, hold wait. on. I so. Wait. What? I got the bucket. Oh, you just didn't. I don't have the attachment. <laughs> you I don't have. The, I need the. This is the right. I just don't have the. They didn't give you the guts. The worm. All right. So. Mm. All right. All right. We're gonna need to see uh, Ogre Fiona. Like you're making it sound like, oh well, you gotta take like, and the everybody bad with the good, and everybody has to be worse. When when she comes up on the screen, you have to say yes or right, no. Connor, she she would Connor, be the worst you've ever had. Connor, that's zero honks. If I'm Connor, <laughs> just, on the couch. <laughs> oh. she, they could have made her way worse. Is that is that real life Fiona on the right there? Yeah, Picture, yeah. I mean, even she is. No, come on. No, 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 no. Fiona's beautiful. She, I mean, what is she? Is she a cool chick or something? <laughs> she, she like, Maybe. she like sports. Like, what? What are we? <laughs> well, just show me a regular picture of Fiona. I think the fact that it's Cameron Diaz voicing it, whether it's Ogre Fiona or regular Fiona, Makes does honor. help a lot. Like, yeah, I love Cameron Diaz. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, as far as like, as far as uh, the, the, as far the, the, as the cartoon the, women go, going, right? That one. Come on. As far as that's cartoon, a beautiful. No, as far as cartoon women, you're not going to sit not here. Top twenty five. You're not going to sit she's here. Not even top twenty five. Not top twenty five. Well, There's twenty five yes. better looking yes. than Fiona. Yes. You're full of shit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I I can handle be smirching yes. ogre Fiona, but god damn, that's she's got Cameron Diaz's voice in that package. That's the voice. Yes. Well, I'm, we're not we're not hearing the voice. I'm just looking at. Got heated there for a second. <laughs> it's not but, finished being heated. But I, if Shrek is an ogre, again, I need this. I need this answered. If Shrek is an ogre, wouldn't he be into an ogre woman? Yeah. yeah. He, he At the like end, him. when she becomes an ogre, isn't that he's he's all good? He's cool with that's it. That's what he wants. I don't know if that's what he wants. But, but, he, the, but would he want he a human? human? He wants a human. Well, he falls in love with her when she's a human. But then, wouldn't an, oh, but wouldn't she in Shrek's mind have gotten hotter? Pr- hotter, yeah. She's got hotter by turning into an ogre. Yeah, I think Shrek was like, I'll you know, you, this is fine. I'll uh, you, yeah, I'll, I'll deal with a human woman. For a human, this is pretty this good. Is, for a human, this isn't that bad. And then she turns into an ogre, and he's like, Oh my god, I didn't know you had that in you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's my understanding. They, I don't. There would be spoilers to Shrek two if I gave the okay. full answer. And okay. I won't. that movie came out twenty but goddamn want, years. But ago. I want to experience going, Shrek two we're together going to Shrek with more together at the. Well, in May. He, we're going to the dude, we theater. can't. We're not doing spoilers for, for movies but, that came out in 2004. Yeah. He definitely is more in love with human oh. Fiona. But yeah. He loves, he has a crush, huge crush on human Fiona. <sighs> what? That's the entire back half of the movie. I think he likes Ogre Fiona better, though. Hmm. He does have kids with Ogre Fiona, right? Yeah. What, how how else were they going to animate half human, half ogre? They animate half donkeys, half dragons. Yeah. So. That's a different love story entirely. They can do anything in this movie. Hey, how do you think the that's going down? Yeah. Um. I. <laughs> right? Eddie Murphy's just in there like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making wild. <laughs> Evo doing an Eddie Murphy impression today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, did, did he just? <laughs> I know he had her scream. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about that does make sense. <laughs> April twelfth, it's back in theaters. Oh, oh, it's in April. Yeah. It's the day before my birthday. I'm on vacation. Then are you for real? But I'll. It's only in should I cancel for my one vacation? week? Oh, it's it's the week you're on vacation. Should Start I vacation? No, no, no. You should fly fly him to wherever your vacation right. is. I'm going to the Caribbean. You want to come? I, I, he has to come. I would need a passport, but yeah. You got, oh, that's right. You don't have a pa- you guys don't. We're doing passport day on the show. I don't have a passport. Man. Passport day is the worst content ever. <laughs> <laughs> what is passport day? You and Brandon are going to fill out paperwork. And TJ. We're standing in line. I also need one. We're gonna live stream you guys standing in line. No, no, no. It, it would be a separate video we'd put up on the U, or on the Rumble YouTube, whatever, and then we would also, yeah, do like a just some some theatrics at the DMV, where we're just <laughs> theatrics at the DMV, <laughs> doing show tunes. Yeah, <laughs> you're breaking the, you're breaking the dance. All the right, just, just 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 indulge me. You don't have to name twenty five. All right, but give me five princesses, off the top of your head, better than top of my head. Uh, number one. First one that comes to mind, Pocahontas. Good choice. 
Pocahontas. She's exotic. Uh, she has like the, an arm thing, which I don't think is a tattoo. It might yeah. be a tattoo. I don't remember, but it, it reminded me of the Pam Anderson barbed wire tattoo. But I think okay. it was just like kind of a it's a thing uh, a thing she wore on her arm. Okay. Um, it was I'm, like a Ben Wallace uh <laughs> sweatband. I'm gonna need on her to bicep. see Disney's Pocahontas. I mean, obviously, I think. I think Pocahontas wore that. I think she wore the Ben Wallace. It was a, was it gold? I don't remember now. Um, I mean, oh, oh yeah, yeah. She had a tattoo. Yeah, it was a tattoo. I mean, look at look at that. Look at that. Mm, oh. I mean, look. I mean, come on, dude. Fiona and her walking <laughs> to the bar at the same time. I think Fiona was st- stacks up well here. That's all I'm gonna say. Fiona would slam a beer with you though. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Fiona. Fiona watches sports, and that's cool. Yeah. She's a cool chick. <laughs> She'll laugh at Shane Gillis jokes, you know? Princess Jasmine. <laughs> Princess Jasmine. <laughs> she watches the yeah. act. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Princess Fiona yeah. wouldn't watch the act. Princess Fiona watches the act. Fuck honest was 12 years old in that movie, I'm hearing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. She's uh, animated. Hold on. She's hold on. <laughs> One, she's animated. Two... I was I was like ten when the movie came out, so I'm, I'm uh, also she part. was not twelve. She wasn't twelve. You were you were punching up. She might have been fifteen. Punching up, yeah. She was like the tallest person in the movie. <laughs> that is that is one of the. <sighs> I didn't I didn't want I didn't want this show to take <laughs> take it here, but I I have to be honest. If we're doing trust tree stuff, that is one of the more like fucked up things is. Watching something nostalgic, like I'll just say it. I watched the. I, <laughs> hear me out. Hear me. How do you out. reconcile that, Brandon? You know where I'm going with this. You know. So where I I'm think going the Sandlot's this. a good example. Where, dude, you watch like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and you right. remember when you were like 16, and you're like Sloane's the hottest chick ever. Yeah. And then having to un. But like Sandlot with Wendy Peppercorn. Wendy the Peppercorn, yeah. And like she's like when you un- saw her the first time, she was 16 and you were 13. Right. And like having to undo the wiring in your brain yeah. is, um, yeah, it's something we all. Are we gonna have the Mrs. Incredible uh, conversation uh, uh, about Mrs. Incredible? Elastic. Way better than Fiona. Jessica Rabbit, I think, is obviously a one-one for a lot of people. Sneaky pick, girl from uh, Hercules movie. Meg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's right. I've never seen mm-hmm. that's right. She and she's got the voice. She's got the mm-hmm. attitude, right? Mm-hmm. Like she blows her bangs up, right? Isn't mm-hmm. she one of those guys? Like the Oh no, that's Lola Bunny. Lola Bunny blows her bangs, or she's like pff, pff, and then her bangs like uh, Yeah, don't ever call me she, doll. Don't ever call me she doll. She bl- blows her bangs. Uh, White Sox Dave is a Lola Bunny guy, right? No, no he's, he's a Nala. A Nala the Lion <laughs> oh. <laughs> From Lion King. <laughs> yeah, Meg, dude. Meg, come on. Come on, Brandon. Meg or Fiona? <laughs> I'm still, I'm still riding for Fiona. All right. I mean, <laughs> she'll, she'll watch ball. She knows how to fight. She knows how to roll a blunt for sure. <laughs> she knows. She does. She kill that bird and makes eggs. Like she, she can provide for you. So he does kill that bird. Uh, <sighs> make a balloon out of a frog or something. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> Was uh, she uh, and a was, snake? Didn't they do a balloon animal? Was, Hercules was a great, great movie. It's my great, first movie. Great Disney movie. Also, great soundtrack. If I remember correctly, I will find my way. <laughs> <laughs> that's the song. Tarzan. No, we know that's the song because you sang it. I can go the distance. What was Tarzan? That was Phil. Collins. Oh, that was Phil Collins. Yeah. Phil Collins went so You'll hard on the Tarzan. Phil Collins had no God. no business going that hard on the Tarzan <laughs> soundtrack. Phil Collins. I want to know. <laughs> Can you show <laughs> me? We'll be back. <laughs> Jungle Man. <laughs> Half of Phil Collins' best songs are the Tarzan <laughs> soundtrack. Yeah. It was like ten years after Phil Collins was really, really famous. Yeah. They just called him up. Hey, hey, can you can you do a Tarzan soundtrack? You goddamn right, I can. Yeah, I got hits. <laughs> I'm, my whole life. For I'm this. fucking I, right. I got hits. Store. <laughs> Suck on that, Rod Stewart. Uh, zero to hero, Connor Hercules. Yep. That was a banger. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never seen Hercules. Y'all are a little. I I, I aged out of uh, the animated movies. Like I never saw Lion King until later. I I was fifteen when Lion King came out. So I, the last one was probably Aladdin in ninety two. So Aladdin was my last animated yeah. movie as a as a kid. Um, Hercu- Meg and Hercules was was she turned against Hercules? I think she started against. Was, so that make her hotter? So she was a little. She was evil? working with the villain. 
Yeah, dude, Jasmine, Aladdin. Mm-hmm. Was it Aladdin two? Return of Jafar. Oh, Jasmine. Or, was, or no, it was in the first. It was in the original first one, one where yeah. she gets put in the uh, hourglass. Oh, really? She's been turned evil. Mm-hmm. There was there was seductress Jasmine. No, I think that's the second one. It's the second one. Yeah, seductress Jasmine was a thing, and oh, <laughs> oh my god, dude. Her Mark, versus was, Fiona, seductress Jasmine versus Fiona. Come Mark, she was Jasmine was nine years older in that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <Jasmine. laughs> like younger and younger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, Yarmer, Yarmer. Uh, let me say it right. Jeremer Jager uh, used to play for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Jeremer Jagers they had a shipment of bobbleheads going to the Penguin Stadium, and uh, they got all stolen. Just somebody stole a huge pallet or a huge truckload. I love that. Of, I uh, love of, it. Of Jeremy Jager bobbleheads, of which I say I am not a criminal. But if I ever become a criminal, I think it will be to hijack bobbleheads. That's tickets. awesome. I love this story. Uh, I would like to buy one of these. I, I know that's probably illegal, and I would probably be aiding and abetting. But I would like to buy one of these. Stolen. I want. I want movies. I want movies like this. I want the the bobblehead heist. Yeah, the bobble heist. Yeah, I want I want uh Yager bomb. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yarmir Yager. Is that how you say it? Jarmir Jager. Jarmir Jager. 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 Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh yeah, so they stole a bunch of bobbleheads. What do you do like with 18, these? 000? Huh? What do you do with these bobbleheads? You just have You can't bo- go to eBay. You just have bobbleheads. So you have 18. No, I guarantee you I mm, well, you're right. They're they're not going to They'll find a dealer. The find a dealer who's like, yeah, I'll sell your stolen your stolen Yager bobbleheads. I don't know, whatever. Maybe they'll just keep them all for themselves. Maybe it's an inside job. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Armi- Jeremy Jager did it. Maybe the maybe Mario Limiux did it because he didn't want Jeremy Jager to have one. Great point, Brandon. Maybe the best way to drive up demand for the Yager bobbleheads yeah. is to steal, to put out the word that they've been stolen. To fake a heist. We're talking now, about it. We're talking about it. Would we have talked about Yarmer Yager bobblehead night? Nope. I would have, off but y'all hitch. wouldn't have. Um, yeah, maybe it's an inside job. Did you? Yeah. What was the uh, What was the plot of Celtic Pride? Remind me, because that's the one sports crime movie. Because they okay. kidnapped somebody, right? Yeah. So it's right after game six. A uh, Utah Jazz have beaten the Celtics in uh, Boston, and these fans think we're going to go out. We got to play game seven tomorrow night, but we're going to go get this fuck guy fucking drunk. We're going to get him hammered, and he's going to not be able to play tomorrow One of the night. jazz players. Yeah. So they go out, and they get drunk, and then they wake up the next day, and he's still there. Lewis something. Lewis. Lewis is his name. Lewis. Okay. I don't know his last name. Williams? No. That's Lu- – doesn't matter. And they end up uh, – they accidentally kidnap him, but then they lean into it, and they just kidnap him for real, and then they all end up being friends. Oh. Mm-hmm. Cool. It's one of the worst sports movies. Yeah. Far and away one of the worst I movies. I want another – Really bad sports movie where people, it's a high slash sports movie. That's the problem. They don't make bad sports Yager, movies anymore. Bobbleheads, yeah. Bad. Yeah, they really don't make bad sports movies anymore. No, they just, they used to, they would just throw us a bunch of sports movies and we'll figure out which ones are good and which ones are bad. Now they just, they try they to don't make all good movies. Every, they don't make a whole lot of bad movies anymore. Every sports oh. movie is trying to get you to cry, right? Like, they, uh, they, do they trying to get sport- you to cry or trying to, it, it's, it's, it's either cry porn, um, the Jesse Owens movie was literally called Race. Yeah, <laughs> like it was. It was you know they they. they but they don't race. make the uh, the Celtic Pride like Rookie of the Year. No, they don't do that. Angels in the outfield. They don't do the Mighty fun Ducks kids type, movie anymore. type of Little Giants. Yeah, they don't really do those anymore. I think those just get buried on the thousands of streaming sites. Like, there's so many fucking movies getting released every month that you will never ever. Oh, have that's of, true. Like, one that's true. Team. Like, if you go yeah. on like any streaming site and just type in sports, uh, you could scroll forever. Movies like full length movies yeah. that you'll never watch. Yeah, you're probably right. They they are doing it. We just don't know you have about no it. concept. Back in the day, it was like the yeah. way to release a movie is to put it in theaters. Yeah, and so we. And then Matt LeBlanc like plays movie. baseball if you're, with monkey, and then that's right. If you're wondering what I've been doing. I, I did just Google Becky the Icebox. Now, I want to how old was she? <laughs> so I'm gonna guess she was in 1994 when the movie came out. She was probably 14 or 15, so she's right around my age. I just wanted to see uh, Becky the Icebox now, and reviews are pretty good. All right, pretty, pretty. Oh. <laughs> Are y'all still here? Okay. Um, 
What else? More? More? I want to talk about wall. Uh, cutting your hair at home isn't as hard as you think. Give your first DIY haircut the old college try with help from wall. Wall is the brand used by professionals and has been in business for over 100 years. Being confident in your hairstyle is empowering. Uh, Brandon and I know that. We got, we're got we two guys with the... Uh, uh-huh. Sh- Icebox has gray hair. <laughs> yes, she does. Wall, uh, being confident in your hairstyle is empowering. Guards aren't just for on the court. The Color Pro Cordless Clipper is your styling MVP with an array of easy-to-see attachment guards, ensuring you can easily score the perfect haircut length. Color Pro Cordless is rechargeable and wireless, which allows you to use the clipper on the go or when it's charging because looking sharp should be a slam dunk. Buy the Wall Cordless Color Pro today. Wall. We love Wall. And we're doing the uh, we're doing the haircut thing, right? Yep. Yeah. Last Best athlete hair. matchup. Best hair. Uh, yesterday, Agassi, Agassi won? Yeah. 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 Agassi. 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 Andre Agassi. 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 Mm-hmm. Agassi. Agassi. Andre Agassi. Mm-hmm. So this is the top half, which we determined yesterday that Andre Agassi won. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we've got Troy. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Troy Polamalu against young David Because Beckham. Because I, here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, can I go first? Please. Polamalu, famous for his hair, has a – Deal. He had like his hair and shirt at one point, right? Yeah. Like he, yeah, yeah. It, very famous hair. Um, I don't think it's good hair. I never mm-hmm. thought it was good hair. I thought it was long hair. I <sighs> I don't think it was actually good hair. I I hate it. I think I, I think Palomalo's hair is overrated. Uh, I uh, listen because look, we're looking at young David Beckham, and that's uh, what the the hair haircut's fine. But he's just a handsome guy, and we, we, we come out of there thinking that's a handsome guy. We don't come out of there thinking amazing haircut. I look at Troy Palomalo, and I'm like, look at that hair. That that hair is is magnificent. Troy Palomalo's hair is rated properly. It's one of the only things but it's in sports just that are rated properly. But it's just long. That's fine. It's not really. Uh, the, 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 a lot, a lot of men's hair that you think they not. have great hair is just long. Uh, but, Jason Momoa, does he have great hair? No, he just has long hair. But he styles it a little bit. Paul would come out some days. Uh, he would be. It would be have, have, puffy. Has, has some Paul days Amalo long. ever done man bun? Has oh yeah, Paul Amalo has definitely done man bun. We've seen man bun Paul Amalo. Now, Can, let's do Troy Paul Amalo man bun just to see if if that. I just want to know that Paul Amalo has. I think he has many tricks in his I, bag. I think he, he has styling on his mind. Then I'll, I want to say he's he's braided I think he's before. Bun now these days, he's rocking a lot of bun these days. He's going bun heavy these yeah. days. I think I saw him talking on. Uh, okay. Okay. On uh, bussin. Oh yeah, corrected. see right there, I like that's corrected. yeah. I think I can. That hair is is universal. Yeah, it can do a lot of things for him. It's got to be Palomalo then. Yeah, it's Palomalo. Yep. I just didn't. I did, it, it, like the, you look at the picture. Mm-hmm. My thought is he's not really putting a lot of thought into it. He's just a lazy guy that doesn't want to do his hair. Yeah. And I don't think that is the mark of good hair. I think that's the mark of just a lazy person. So I but I I think the opposite. I think. I, I, upon further review, I do think Palomalu has an aesthetic in mind and and knows how to style this. I think that guy long ago had to come to the realization and he had to come to grips with the fact that his job required him to wear a helmet because otherwise he would not want to cover that up. Yeah. And if he could have played ball without a helmet, he might have tried. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Here we go. Thank you, Walt. Um, Just check the DMs real quick, as I always do at 1026. Uh, always do at 1026 on the show. Uh, I got a um, – I got a DM from a zero follower account that says, Fiona Fiona has a stinky pussy guaranteed. Like, <laughs> he might have he might have a point, because where does the ogre, where does the ogre go? <laughs> where does the ogre parts go? God. What do you, God damn. What do you mean, where do they go? Are they not humanoid things? Hygiene is not really their thing, Ogre. Right? Say, no, oh, right? Mud, mud bath. Yeah, that's... You think they don't sweat? Uh, that's... You think the, they're like Carl Ham? All I'm saying... <laughs> Carl all, Ham and Shrek? All I'm saying is... Look, we got to make a choice of the show. We're going to break down Fiona's pussy or not. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not? No, no, we're not? Okay, all right. No, no, no. We've had a – no. No, no, no. Are we too – okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Next week. We'll do it next <laughs> okay. week. We'll do it next week. <laughs> all right. Let's just do it next week. We'll do – you know what? We're not going to do it today. We'll do, <laughs> we'll do Fiona Pussy Day. <laughs> 
Mark the calendar, Connor. Let's do it in May. Let's do. You understand Fiona what I'm Bus- saying, Ebo? Because like, like. Let's do Fiona Bus- and, and, and as soon as it gets dark, she's all ogre. Okay. As soon as it gets light, she's all human again. Oh, is she? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Well, That's still switching back and forth. He switches back and forth in the first one. In the first one, she does. I thought she was. Per- I thought she. I thought that was a permanent change. I didn't know that. Perma ogre. Dude, I got. I gotta. I gotta brush up on my. Well, crack. well, well. True well, love's I kiss. He hasn't seen Shrek two, but that's the first. No, I got that. That's I gotta go. I it's got actually homework. basically both of them. I got homework both of them. But tr- yeah, True Love's Kiss, right? He's right. Which one's that? That's uh, the first one. Where's the Farquaad first? is in the first. He's in the first one. That's an all time. We were talking about the other day about how country music sometimes has those uh, those lines that lead you to say ass, but they don't say it. Mm-hmm. And the Shrek one is an all timer with that when it's. Uh, Stay off of the grass. Clean your shoes. Wipe your face. Do lock is. Do lock is. Do lock is the perfect. Nobody. Pretty good video games. Shrek. Amazing video games. Shrek Super Slam, I think, was one. It's like a party game. Oh man, that first wrestling scene on Shrek One was. Oh, that was sick. Shrek's so good. I didn't know you were into Shrek like that. You're, you're glowing, I love Shrek. You're glowing over there. I know. I wasn't really into Mark, Shrek, but then Mark, I saw Mark. your face. Now I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. Mark, I, I couldn't leave. I, if I try. I, <laughs> I couldn't decide which Shrek shirt to wear today. Oh, my God. I had multiple. Is that one? one? No, I, 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 I'm going to debut this one next week. And but I'm you can look at fame. it. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm a believer. Shrek Super Party. Oh, this I like this one a lot. Now I'm a bully. I got a gift from uh, for us or from Mark. Okay. I mentioned on the show last week. Oh yeah, that's right. You did. Gonna do a little unboxing. Two weeks. All right, it's time to really get your stuff in and send it to uh, Ebo. Uh, send it to Ebo here at Barcelona headquarters. You can DM Ebo or TJ or me to get that address if you want to be a part of Unboxing Day or Opening Day. Um, opening Day is March 28th. Same day. Did you know that Major League Baseball is having Opening Day the same day? Cease and desist. Yeah, maybe. We... Damn, that's cold. So, what do you got on that box? Uh, let's find out together. What you got in that bag? What? What's in that bag, homie? From TJ. Oh, oh. oh my goodness! How come markets all the good? That's wow. You go? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, you're gonna be fine. Yep. I love you, TJ. Love you, TJ. I don't think TJ did it, did it. Did you do it? Yeah, I bought this. TJ, oh, I love you, man. God damn. Wow. The Dale Earnhardt phone. <laughs> yep, that's the Dale phone. <laughs> He's got the fucking Dale phone. He got the Dale phone. <laughs> the fucking Dale phone. Yeah. This is incredible. Okay. Now, question. How you display that? Do you just put the box out, or I, do you take the phone out, put it on the box? Or? I will spend... I'm going to spend a lot of money and a lot of time trying to figure out how to make this a functioning phone that sits on this desk. <laughs> that we can get a call? That on we can show? get call, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, TJ. This is incredible. Pretty good. That's I'm I'm taking it out of the box for sure. Um Yeah. Now TJ, you said it. you had gifts for all of us? Nope. Okay. Oh, it's <laughs> even better than I thought. There has to be where's the closest phone, Jack? I'd like Indiana. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Probably not very close. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, hold that. Hold on. Hold on. Real quick. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mark, Mar- we're yep. doing a show over here. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, yeah, yeah. I. I. I yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can be there. I can be there. Yeah. Uh. No. Just go ahead. Yeah. Just go ahead and. Uh, just order some order some Jägermeister for me. I'll be there as soon as I can, but uh, hold off on ordering on entrees. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. See you. Now I have to get a phone that rivals this phone. I don't know how. I have to get a better Dude. phone. Oh, my God. We're going to have phone wars. What a gift, TJ. Pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I want to figure out how to use it so badly. Can't wait till opening day. Dude, there's a phone. There's a, there's a, there's a jack right here. That's probably Ethernet. It might be Ethernet. What's the difference? One's a phone jack, one's an Ethernet jack. The Ethernet jack's a little bigger, but you can try it. A Cat three cable versus something. Else. If you if you plug that in and you get a dial tone, I'm leaving. It it went in pretty it good. Clicked. It clicked. <laughs> it clicked. 
It clicked. I'm right, not do we saying, have a number? Do we have a number set up? I, we probably have to set it up. We probably have to activate it, but it clicked in. The thing. <laughs> do we get Stefan Brandon, in here? <laughs> tell me this isn't the greatest idea. <laughs> Stefan, if you're watching, we need help setting up a phone <laughs> line. If we could set up a phone where the Dale Earnhardt <laughs> phone. Like, we're not going to give the number out to everybody, yeah. but like we'll give a select few. That's this how is, we this is like a, a, Blutman, a Blutman thing, too. We'll, we'll work on I don't know. We'll phone. figure it out. We'll get a phone. Holy shit. Turning. <laughs> no. You like All right. That, that oh, was the good. Are, the wheels are turning. Yeah. Well, you got anything else to say? Uh, I have a question. Thank you, TJ. You're welcome. I said earlier that you go to um the DMV for a passport. Is that true? I have no. Fun. Yeah. Where do you even go for a passport? Uh, what else is going? On? <laughs> I just wanted. To uh. No, you got to go to like a. Pass- a special pass- office pass- passport place I think, yeah okay I, the passport I, think, I don't know it's been a while like the thing is you get once you get your passport you just kind of renew it which is really easy to do you just send in shit i think hmm. so when i actually like got my passport that was a long long time ago we ever um, getting real ids you guys have that dude that's such a joke <laughs> you guys know the real id thing what, what i've heard what, about it they've been saying I, for years that we got to get this real id with I the think star they're faking on it. it i think they're faking it and it's you're going to need it to fly eventually, but they keep pushing the date back. Mm, terrible. I don't know. What's the deal with real IDs, man? I don't know. You guys seeing the shit? Oh, also, should we be flying? Is 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 Boeing breaking down? Airbuses. Okay. Airbuses only. Well, we don't really have a choice, do we? What is you-, you can check what type of uh, your plane okay. for your flight. Boeing's toast? Boeing, there's, Not a guy, a there's a guy out there that, that also was whistleblowing, and then he ended up dead, and now there's reports that... Uh, was he floating in a president's pool? I don't know. I, I, I think he was in the parking lot. I don't know. Boeing's uh, – I'm still going to fly, but I don't know. Boeing's going through it. Um. All right, maybe we can look at – okay, the, I'm, I'm, look, I'm going through the silly scene of making sure there's nothing we missed. Staff at Virginia Wildlife. Oh, no, we have, we have the Fiona Pussy discussion. <laughs> hmm. No, we're doing Fiona Pussy Day, I thought. I thought we're so- oh, I got – here's one I like on the silly sheet. 2024 World Video Game Hall of Fame finalists draw from four decades. Asteroids, which debuted in 1979, and Guitar Hero, which arrived in 2005, are nominated alongside 1980s launches Elite, Metroid, SimCity, and Ultima. And from the 90s, Myst, Neopets, Resident Evil, Tokimeki Memorial, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and You Don't Know Jack. Mm -hmm. To which I ask this, TJ. If you're going to have a World Video Game Hall of Fame, how in the world are Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Guitar Hero, Metroid, Sim City, and Asteroids not already in? Yeah, Asteroids seems like an obvious one. The other, I don't know. Asteroids if- is the triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is turning and then shooting at the big asteroids. Yeah, you're shooting the line at it, and then they blow up in a smaller one. Yeah, yeah. okay. But Sim City is like, Sim City should be in as well. The other ones, I would argue, like Guitar Hero is not the best Guitar Hero game. Right? If, Are they putting in the game or, or the, the franchise? Three is 100,000 times better than the first one. Is. Yeah, but they're, they're doing the game or the Tony franchise? Tony Hawk Pro Skater, yeah. I don't, I, don't. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Video games, how many can we really put in the Hall of Fame? Are we do like a baseball situation where we gatekeep it, or is it going to be an NBA situation well, this where everybody This like the Toy Hall of Fame we talked about yeah. on the show where like Stick is in the Toy Hall of yeah. Fame. Yeah. I'm, I'm remaining consistent on my Hall of Fame if I've heard of it and I've played it. You're in. Well, let's throw this idea out there. <laughs> Video game Hall of Fame, right? It exists. What if we identify a genre, a food, a toy, uh, anything that doesn't have a Hall of Fame yet? What about... What if there's not like a sneaker Hall of Fame and we, well, here's, we, here's we do one. it? What if it's the Hall of Fame of Hall of Fame? Of Hall of Fame? What if we go to all the Hall of Fames, right. we decide which ones are the best... We no, build I, shrines to those. Sounds like you're fames. describing Mount Rushmore. Hmm. Would Mount Rushmore be in your Hall of Fame of Hall of Fames? I who's on your Mount Rushmore of, of the Hall of, of Fame? Mount Rushmore's. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mount Rushmore is a Hall of Fame, right? It's a wall. Could, but could theoretically, we could put a new face on there. But we Mount haven't Rushmore, put a new president. By the way, we could sucks. add a face. Have you been to Mount Rushmore? I've heard it's tiny. It sucks. Yeah. It's so stupid, and it's unfinished. That's the other thing about Mount Rushmore. They were the the original plans called for like torsos, 
and yeah. shit, and they just gave up. They just did faces. Yeah, and they they did that with uh, the uh, the the native guy who's the um, little horse. Is it little horse? Is that the one? They, they're crazy like working horse? on a crazy horse. Yeah, great they're, name. They're, they're doing a crazy horse statue mm-hmm. that I remember uh, doing a road trip for a basketball tournament one time. We were going through South Dakota, and we stopped by the crazy horse statue, and I was like six, and they and the people were like, "It's going to be done in five years." <laughs> And then I went and saw that thing like two years ago, and I was like, "They haven't done a goddamn It'll thing." Be done in five thing. years. Yeah. Here's your International Video Games Hall of Fame. Blue is inductees. Everything else is nominees. Mount Rushmore sucks. Okay, so all those should be in. Um, again, I, I just the I, Oregon Trail. How does Sonic in. the Hedgehog not get in? In the first year, it got in the second year, but it's okay. not. So it's individual games. Okay, so it's, it's games. GTA Three. It's not Grand Theft Auto. Okay, it's games. Okay, all right. So, Okay. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. So Sonic got in on the second ballot. Yeah. The Sims got in on the second ballot. Yeah. Pokemon Red and Green is not the original Pokemon game. All right, continue down. I just want to see what gets in. Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong got in, Halo, uh, Pokemon Red and Green, Red Street Fighter 2. 2. So all those are good. But Street Fighter 2 got in, but Mortal Kombat didn't. See, that's, that's interesting right. to me. Maybe they only wanted one fighting game on the ballot. Huh. Uh, all right, you want to shut us down? Yeah. Let's Solitaire? shut us down. We'll do. We'll be doing uh, Super Mario Kart. It's Colossal Cave. Yeah, Super Mario Kart. We'll be doing Fiona Pussy Week. Text based week. adventure. Uh, so, send us all the Fiona. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, that's the show. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back on. Kirby fashion designer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back on Monday. See you guys then. That's how ball is done.